One could say that the ages of man are defined by the materials that they had available. We're familiar with the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, the Iron Age, etc. And uh, one could also say that the Industrial Age became possible and was born once people became able to mass-produce steel in large quantities. And uh, steel is uh, melted, cast, and then uh, produced in various shapes, slabs, etc., in the solid state. It's really important that the material be liquid because its composition is set there, and that's very difficult to change that once it's solid. Um, uh, following along that theme, the modern transportation age really be is enabled by the mass production of aluminum, which became uh, possible only in the late 1800s. And aluminum is only available in the liquid state. It's made by reduction of aluminum oxide. You start with liquid aluminum, which is then alloyed, cast, and uh, also produced in solid state um, as, as for steel. So the process of going from liquid to solid is solidification, and that's actually the topic of our book. One could also say that the real science and engineering of, uh, of solidification began in the 40s, 1940s, and 1950s, with, uh, where people started to apply engineering principles and uh, try to represent simple engineering models of the solidification process. And this was uh, in particular the work of uh, Shavornov, who modeled castings at the macroscopic scale, and Bruce Chalmers, who modeled a solidification at a microscopic scale. And this work was culminated in a book by Chalmers, Principles of Solidification, in 1964, which was the first real text that began to uh, unify the science of metallurgy with the engineering practices and modeling of, of the processes. Then during the 1960s, in particular, Flemings and his co-workers at MIT started to apply similar uh, principles and analyses at the scale of the microstructure itself, and uh, this work was summarized in another landmark text in 1974 by Fleming's called Solidification Processing. And then in the 1970s, that work was followed on by a large amount of activity where people were trying to understand what is essentially a pattern selection problem how microstructures are formed, and what is the importance of transport of heat, transport of solute, and also the important phenomena associated with the material properties. And that work was summarized in 1984 by, in a text by Kurtz and Fisher called Fundamentals of Solidification. And since that time, there have been a few specialty texts that came out, but really nothing that integrated the uh, previous work with what happened after 1984. And 1984 is sort of a landmark because that was right at the beginning of the explosion in computational power when uh, very powerful and inexpensive computers became available on everyone's desk. And so people started using computational models in addition to the analytical models that had been used before. This made a big difference because one didn't have to make the assumptions about simple geometries or uh, oversimplified boundary conditions, and one could actually uh, <coughs> build very complex models that were very realistic. And <coughs> so we felt now almost 25 years after Kurtz and Fisher that it was time for a textbook that uh, was comprehensive, that included the fundamental analytical approaches that had been done in, say, pre-1984, and taught people how to do the computational material science that uh, became possible afterwards, and showed how the in we could integrate the two together and uh, one of the important features of our text was to then 
take some of the older models and to put them in the context of the newer computational approaches, all using a, uh, a common notation, which is uh, used throughout the book. <clears throat> the unifying theme, really, for the book is uh, thinking about materials and solidification uh, over the range of length and time scales, which is really vast from the macroscopic scale, where we have uh, solidification of, of castings and large steel slabs, which are at the length scale of a meter and might take 20 minutes or an hour, <clears throat> down to through the microstructure, which forms usually in a few seconds, and then down even to the atomic scale, where things happen at uh, nanosecond time scales and over a length scale of a few atoms. We uh, divide the text into three parts. The first part is we call fundamentals, in which we present thermodynamics and phase diagrams, which are traditional metallurgy, and also um, balance equations and other fundamental things that are needed throughout the book. The second part of the book is about microstructure and how that develops, where we start with the analytical models that one can find in, say, Kurtz and Fisher, and then proceed to how you can use computational approaches to extend those into uh, more complex systems. And then finally, we the third part of the book discusses defects, and we focus on things like porosity, hot tearing, and macrosegregation, which are still very important problems today, but include things at that range from the micro scale to the macro scale and are very difficult to get a handle on if one only looks at a small piece. So our hope is that students and practicing engineers will find this book useful um, and uh, will see the integration between the fundamentals and the, uh, and the practice of uh, modeling solidification.